Following the late 90s release of his first studio record, Eminem has returned to a few themes repeatedly. His mother's recipe for homemade spaghetti was such a key inspiration, it not only worked its way into his chart-topping anthem, Lose Yourself, but inspired the Mom Spaghetti Casual Dining Restaurant in Detroit. Still, no single topic has influenced his music more than his tumultuous relationship with ex-wife Kim, so much so that his fans have a near-complete timeline of their ups and downs. So, today we're walking eight miles through the entire history of Eminem and Kim's relationship. But before the real Slim Shady stands up, why not subscribe to the Weird History channel? Then drop down into the comments and let us know which other popular artists you would like to hear about. Now, for the love of God, please write Stand Back. Eminem was born Marshall Bruce Mathers II in October of 1972, and though he's intimately associated today with the city of Detroit, he was actually born in St. Joseph, Missouri. Young Marshall was the only child of Marshall Bruce Mathers Jr. and Debbie Nelson Mathers, musicians who spent most of his infancy touring along with a band called Daddy Warbucks. That's the name of the wealthy benefactor who adopts the title character in the movie Annie. When young Eminem was just a year and a half old, his father left the family, never to return. M's mother Debbie later recalled that her son wrote his father letters, only to have them returned to sender, unopened. The single mother and child moved around several times over the next few years, with stops in St. Joseph, Savannah, Georgia, and Kansas City, before they eventually landed in Detroit, Michigan. Once settled, young Marshall experienced severe bullying at his new school, prompting his mother to actually file a lawsuit against the district in 1982. It was later dismissed. This was also the period that Eminem first started developing his lifelong interest in storytelling and hip-hop music. By age 14, he was already rapping along with a friend named Mike Ruby, under the nickname M&M, for Marshall and Mike. The duo started attending open mic contests at the hip-hop shop along Detroit's West Seven Mile Road, a key hub for the city's burgeoning rap scene, and developed something of a local reputation. Marshall first encountered Kim Scott at a house party in 1988, when he was 15 and she was just 13 years old. He was rapping and goofing around, by most accounts mocking the words to the popular LL Cool J song, I'm Bad, when Kim stopped to listen while smoking a cigarette. She'd had a similarly chaotic childhood, which may have helped the duo develop a tighter bond. Kim and her twin sister Dawn had been born to single mom Kathleen Doherty in Warren, Michigan in 1975. But prior to meeting Marshall, she and her sister had run away from home. They'd been living in a youth shelter outside Detroit. A few months later, Marshall convinced his mother Debbie to allow Kim to move in with them. Debbie later recalled in her memoir that Kim was very quiet and sulky during these first encounters, making their relationship strained and awkward. She also wrote about checking in on Kim and tucking her into bed every night to ensure she wasn't secretly sneaking up to Marshall's room. The kids had originally told Debbie that Kim was 15, not 13. She learned the truth from truant officers who visited the home checking for Kim after repeated absences from school. Debbie's differences with Kim and disapproval of the relationship led the young couple to ultimately leave the house and move out on their own. By the early 1990s, Marshall's music career was starting to take off and he had dropped out of high school at age 17. He made his first music video appearance in 1992 for a song called Duda Dippity by Detroit rapper Champ Town, and he started working on a self-titled EP along with his childhood friends and another Detroit rapper called Proof. But on the personal side, life during this period was a struggle for Marshall and Kim. They lived in a string of questionable unsafe neighborhoods and were frequently robbed. On one occasion that Eminem later recalled in an interview with Rolling Stone, a thief came by and took their couches, beds, and silverware, but only after fixing themselves a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Hey, burgling is hungry work. Marshall supported the couple by cooking and washing dishes at a family restaurant called Gilbert's Lodge, earning minimum wage. On Christmas Day, 1995, Kim gave birth to the couple's first and only biological child, their daughter, Haley. They briefly moved back in with Marshall's mother, Debbie, for help during this period. But this sitcom in the making didn't last very long. Marshall later claimed that Debbie was abusing drugs during this period, making her behavior unpredictable and erratic. But she denies these claims. Regardless, the situation soon collapsed, and Marshall moved in with friends while Kim returned to her mother's house. 
Fabian Toe. A few days before Christmas 1996, Marshall lost the job at Gilbert's Lodge. Combined with the stress of his home life and his own struggles with substance abuse, this culminated in an unsuccessful suicide attempt. By March of 1997, Marshall, Kim, and Haley were all back once again living with Marshall's mother, Debbie, in her mobile home. Marshall started recording his self-titled EP, which introduced his sadistic, violent alter ego, Slim Shady. While attending the 1997 Rap Olympics competition in Los Angeles that year, Eminem first came to the attention of Interscope Records executives, including CEO Jimmy Iovine. Up until this point, massively influential NWA veteran and producer Dr. Dre had never signed an artist based only on hearing a demo tape or CD. But after Iovine played Eminem's Slim Shady EP for the mogul, he immediately said, find him now. The Slim Shady LP was released by Interscope and Dre's label Aftermath in February 1999. The album contains smash hits like My Name Is and Guilty Conscience, the first song featuring Eminem and Dre together. It made Eminem an internationally recognized superstar, while also providing at times uncomfortably intimate glimpses into the difficult and troubled relationship between Marshall and Kim. For example, 97 Bonnie and Clyde includes a fantasy of Marshall driving around with Haley in the car and Kim's dead body in the trunk. Ultimately, he dumps the corpse in a lake. The song originally appeared on the Slim Shady EP, but for the full album version, Marshall brought his daughter along to the recording studio and grabbed some background vocals. He later told Rolling Stone that he lied to Kim about where they were going and said that he was taking their daughter to Chuck E. Cheese for pizza. A fellow Gilbert's Lodge employee named Lynn Hunt claims she expressed to Marshall that producing a song in which he fantasizes about murdering the mother of his child felt very dark, to which he replied, yeah, but it will get me somewhere someday. Despite hating her so passionately in verse, on June 14, 1999, just prior to his first major tour as a recording artist, Marshall married his longtime partner, Kim. Around that same time, Kim's sister Dawn started struggling with drug problems of her own, making it challenging to raise her own daughter, Elena Marie Scott. Kim and Marshall took Elena in, and Marshall formally adopted the girl in the early 2000s. Dawn Scott passed away in 2016. Still, there was no extended honeymoon period for the new family. Kim later said that Marshall's success in the music industry went to his head, causing him to develop a god complex. In 2000, Marshall himself told a local Detroit paper that he'd long wished for success, but was finding it more of a nightmare than a dream. In June of that year, Marshall was arrested for assault outside a Detroit club after hitting a bouncer named John Guerra with an unloaded gun. Marshall claimed he'd seen Guerra kissing Kim, though she denied this in an interview with the Detroit Free Press. She told the paper she wouldn't cheat on him in a neighborhood he knows, adding that she remained steadfastly loyal to her husband despite seeing photos of him in magazines with groupies. The assault charge was later dropped, but Mathers received two years probation for possession of a concealed weapon. That same summer, Eminem released his third studio album, which contains yet more violent meditations about his home life and family. The lead-off track, Kill You, mocks the controversy around his previous album and its misogynistic lyrics, and includes a fantasy about assaulting his mother, Debbie. The song Kim unsurprisingly included his most direct verbal attacks on his wife to date. It takes the form of a heated argument between the couple, in which Eminem berates his spouse for her drug and alcohol abuse and infidelity, then threatens to bump both her and their daughter Haley off before taking himself out. During live performances of Kim, Eminem would sometimes bash and pummel a blow-up doll that had been designed to resemble his wife. In July of 2000, Kim attended an Eminem concert and saw the performance for herself. She later stated that she had been devastated to see an entire arena full of fans cheering her husband and laughing at lyrics about violence against her and her child, and she attempted to take her own life. Following the attempt, Marshall and Kim started discussing the possibility of divorce, which was probably a good idea. Kim eventually filed a lawsuit against her husband for emotional distress, which was ultimately settled. Kim and Marshall formally separated in 2001, retaining joint custody of Haley. Eminem kept the house in which they'd lived, while Kim used the settlement to purchase her own home. Following their marriage, Kim started dating a new guy named Eric Harder, 
and in 2002, they had a little boy named Stevie. Still, Marshall and Kim remained in close touch, as they were still raising Haley and Elena together. By 2006, they were each single again, and decided to give the marriage another shot. On January 14th, Marshall and Kim married for a second time in a small private ceremony in Michigan, with just a few close friends and Haley in attendance. Marshall also formally adopted Stevie as his third child. The reunion was not fated to last, and by April of that same year, Marshall filed for his second and most likely final divorce from Kim. Kim's public profile started to gradually recede following the second divorce. Rumors circulated in 2010 that the couple was once again considering a reunion, but Eminem quickly shot them down in the press. In 2016, while appearing on a Detroit radio show, Kim said that she and Marshall remain really close friends who were just trying to create a normal life for their kids. The following year, Eminem released the song Bad Husband, which in some ways functions as an apology to Kim for his past behavior and angry lyrics. The song notes, we brought out the worst in each other. Someone had to make the sparring end, cause I loved you, but hated that me, and I don't wanna see that side again. Like oil and water, M, like oil and water. So what do you think? Are you an Eminem fan? Or are his songs a little too dark for your tastes? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.